I'm Chao Jun with Xinhua News Agency, and this is Shu Jian. Now we're at the Jiangkou Township in southwest China, Sichuan Province, where a huge archaeological dig located. The site is located at the intersection of Mingjiang and Jinjiang rivers, 50 kilometers south of Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan. Today, we are going to lead you guys to explore a treasure site and we'll tell you the story about sunken silver ingots. So, Zhang Xiezhong is a leader of a, pe of a peasant uprising. He established his empire in nowadays southwest Sichuan, China, uh, China, Sichuan province, and called himself the King of the West. One autumn day in 1646, about a, a thousand ships carrying treasure belonging to Zhang sank in the Mingjiang River during a bloody naval ba battle. In the battle, Zhang was defeated and his treasure was sunk into the river. This tale and its location soon passed into a local legend. So why he collected so many treasure and what his treasure exactly is? According to the historic records, Zhang's army lacked a reliable resource of income after years of involvement in wars in the cities of Middle and Upper uh, branches of Yangtze River. These silver ingots uh, were looted from the local as, uh, tra as he traveled in order to obtain the money he needed to keep his army going. Hundreds of years passed. The legend still spread abroad among the people, but no one can tell at the actually uh, location and uh, where uh, to and to find the treasure. Until 2005, some farmers discovered seven silver ingots while they were building a, a river construction, and this discovery proved the story of the King of the West's treasure was more than just a uh, tale. After studying the items, the local government declared an area a protected site in 2010. But a comprehensive ex excavation was, was hindered as experts argued over the existence of the legendary sunken boats. But treasure hunters were, urgently, uh, were not patient and they were urgently diving into the river, search for and uh, steal the buried treasure. Local police conducted a year-long investigation in 2015, arresting uh, over 30 suspects and, uh, con and confiscating thousands of gold and silver coins or ingots, as well as large quality of diving equipment. And after the treasure site has been discovered, uh, archaeologists and experts started to prepare an excavation. We are now standing on the riverbed. It is here that Chinese archaeologists have ex <coughs> excavated more than 30,000 relics which are believed to be the treasure owned by the rebel leader Zhang some, 40, uh, some 400 years ago. Let's go in and see how they are working on this treasure site. Okay, let's follow us to see the, the working site. The first phase of the underwater excavation began in 2016. And it complicated in April of 2017, in the area of over 10,000 square meters. I believe all of you are curious about what did they found. From a treasure list, we know that uh, the unearthed treasure of the, this site are included large amount of gold and silver coins, silver ingots, gold and silver cups and bowls, gold and silver earrings, and hairpins. Look, in a word, most of the treasure are gold and silver. Wow, how precious. The objects span the middle and late periods of Ming Dynasty over 400 years ago and came 
from areas covering more than half of China's territory at that time. The items are extremely valuable to science, history, and art. They are of great significance for research into the political, economic, military, and social lives of Ming Dynasty. And don't worry, today you will follow us and see very clearly how this treasure looks like. And firstly, let's see how the excavation work doing here. So besides the gold and silver objects, also people found jewelry, mirrors, porcelain plates, iron swords, knives, and spears, and a large number of gold spikes near the treasure, which indicate the treasure were sunken on boat. Experts told us the objects uncovered are the most direct and compelling evidence to identify the area where the battle was fought. Among all of them, some are rarer seen in archaeological discoveries in China, and this treasure site has been selected one of the top 10 archaeological discoveries in China last year. The current road of excavation started at the end of 2017 and will be ended soon. And all these two excavations, worker dug over 20,000 square meters of the riverbed only marks 2% of the estimated relic site. So what huge work to do? From, from where we are standing to the very far place, the unknown trigger could be anywhere. You know, when you look down this area, we can see the Redstone Riverbed. You know, it's a Redstone Riverbed. It is the ancient riverbed of Mingjiang River. And this riverbed was covered by meters of layers in rocks and sands over hundreds of years. Those gold and silver treasure are scattered, you know, buried in these sand and stones. We can see a lot of workers are working here and they need to remove those sand and stones layer by layer and carefully seek any sign of the relics by doing so. They are first one who see those treasures and let us uh, you know ask some of them about their experience. Hello. 你好，梁师傅。啊，您给我们那个介绍一下您挖到了什么宝贝都在这儿？银银的啊，啥都有，啥那都是小的，大的都有。Okay, he just said like he has dig the silver ingot with uh the a small scale and the big scales. 都是大桥宝宝,三宝宝,需要三宝。十万三宝。哦,OK。呃,那个桥宝天使有几个吗?有几个吗?那个有。呃,桥宝天使有几个吗?那是单个的,有些是桥宝,有些是,它不是一个大
kind of wooden box which ha which contains the silver ingots in it. And also he has find the uh, golden coins which the Imperial rewards to his army. So I, I just asked Mr. Yang to uh, uh, guide us to the place he got the silver ingot. Uh, Mr. Yang said like in this area he found many boxes of many, many wooden boxes of uh, He said like uh, he discovered um, uh, six wooden box of the silver ingots here. <laughs> also in that location. Uh, Mr. Yang just said like the box uh, all uh, usually hidden in the um, holes in the river base and it weighs about three kilometer kilograms. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, we just asked about uh, Mr. Ya. What do you feel about what, what, what's your feeling when you dig the box of the ingot? And uh, what surprised us is that he is not he was not feeling so surprised because all these kinds of relics are belong to the uh, country and belong to the administration. So he just uh, not that surprised me. Okay. We just asked him about what the frequency he discovered this treasure and he said that depends depends the fortune and some days he will find seven or six or seven relics um, of this treasure but some days um, that's not good and uh, so uh, Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Liang. Okay, right now let's take a close look at the excavation work. We can see the workers are, you know, holding those baskets they are cleaning the moss and sands they are trans transfer those moss and sands by using these baskets and to a particular site and then at there another workers will you know 
see lucky then choose look very carefully uh, what's inside and whether there are some treasures some ingots golden silver uh, gold and silver or brown you know money ancient brown money inside those mountain seats sand most of the workers are you know our local people they're living in this area along with their daily work and they are hearing the tales of uh, king of the west and they are knowing you know they are familiar with the tales of the sunken tre the treasure sunken silver on this riverbed she told me that their daily work is doing by uh, like by doing this they're uh, digging those moths and transfer those sands and stones by the basket they're working seven hours a day 您在这工作了多长时间了？从去年前年开始就在这工作了吗？去年来的。去年几月？一月。哦，今年哦。今年一月。She joined this team, uh, this January in 2018。你发现了什么宝贝吗？有。有什么？有银锭吗？啊，多大的？ 我没有不知道，没看到。这个大大的，没有，你不知道有大小有多大？你给我比划比划。哦，有有有多大吧？哦，OK。She told us that the most precious treasure she found was the silver ingots, and it's about this big. And she didn't know how much it is, and then when you know she found it. Uh, they need to give it to the experts and they will transfer it to the treasure room. Okay, we have talked a lot about the treasure. So, as you can see now, the side is fenced up and uh, the water is joined. Actually, this project is the first underwater excavation in Sichuan province. And it's also the first time that copper dams have, have been used in China. Once the copper dams have filled up, the water was pumped out from this area. The excavators and the workers can dig and uh, uh, recover the relics from the mud. So next, please follow me. Uh, we will do some interview with uh, experts and he will tell us more about the Excavation. So this is Mr. Li Fei, and he is a core core leader of this program. Um, um,呃，那个我们是从前年的年底开始筹备这样的一次发掘。那前年年底呢，其实我们是呃整体的围堰的范围大概是上下一千米啊，宽也一百多米啊。其实今年的发掘范围和去年基本上一样的，然后去年呢我
Okay, so the first phase of space excavation started in 2016 and ended in 2017, April. And the first phase, uh, the, expo the experts explored over 10,000 uh, square meters and uh, discovered over 30,000 relics. And in the second uh, phase, um, the excavation started last the end of last year and it will end in very soon in this April. And in this phase, the, um, the experts dig over like uh, 10,000 square meters and also discovered about uh, 12,000 uh, historic relics. I'm asking Mr. Lee that what kind of work works uh, they are doing here. 其实主要就是做的一个现场发掘工作然后在这个基岩以上呢我们还是通过人工来发掘这样我们发掘出来的每一件文物呢每一个重要的文物都会通过RTK那种那个定位的仪器来测定它的经纬度包括它的海拔高度等等所以其实我们这样的一个工作是
they keep uh, broadcasting and keep you know release a lot of information to the media and so that public can trace up and follow up their works. Ah, 除此之外呢，其实在去年挖掘完成之后呢，我们也积极的走进了一些公众。啊，走进了一些学校，比如，呃，我们在四川省博物馆、山西省博物馆，包括我和我们刘志言也进入到厦门大学、北京大学这样的学校去讲这个江口成营的挖掘成果，呃，甚至我们也走进了当地的中学，为我们彭山本地的中学去讲江口成营的这样的一个呃发掘过程和它的历史背景。They also take some time to go inside the universities and local middle schools,、uh, also the public areas to make lectures and such kind of activities to let people know what they are doing and what they are found and the achievements of this excavation work. 还有昨天其实是一个很重要的一个节日，是四幺八的国际古迹遗址日。那在昨天呢，我们也是去进行了一个大规模的公众开放。呃，在全省范围内招募了一百名志愿者来参与到这个现场的发掘的这样的一个开放活动，包括为公众讲解这个文物背后的历史。通过这一系列的活动呢，我想我们的这样的一个呃考古发掘也更能够走进公众，让公众了解什么是真正的一个科学的考古。Yesterday is a big event for them. They are, uh, they are having a one hundred volunteers. Uh, 50 in the morning and 50 in the afternoon to take a close look at the、uh, working site and also take a close look at the treasures they are found. By doing this,、uh, they hope the public could know more about the real、uh, excavation work and what achievements they are got. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Lee. So right now we are looking at the excavation work. And now we're going to unveil what are they and how valuable they are. We're going to the command office right now and to take a close look at the treasure. Okay, let's go. Before we head into the treasure room, I would like to introduce you guys a very special guest here. So this is Cong Yi, and she is a volunteer in this program. But what surprised me is that she is、uh, she she is from University of London, and she her major is not related to archaeology. So. So you, could you please tell us more about yourself? Okay,、um, I'm Yi, and、um, I've been here at the Sun Concern Exotic Science for about、uh, two months, and uh, uh, I've always been interested in archaeology.、Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here to participate in this project.、Uh, For now,、uh, I've experienced most links of the archaeological process, such as uh, photography, um, uh, storage, and uh, preserving the objects. And、uh, I found the most interesting part is the excavating process because、uh, when you、uh, like unearth an object from、uh, underground. And you can、uh, feel like you can directly、uh, experience what happened behind this object, like the history、uh, that existed hundreds of years ago. So,、um, and uh, uh, where did you find this project?、Uh, okay, it's, uh, I saw it online. Uh, uh, our team leader posted. So, is is that the volunteer program? Is that a volunteer program? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a volunteer. So I just、uh, signed immediately.、Yeah. Uh, are you in vacation now, or is that?、Uh... 
Yeah, uh, I plan to uh, fly. Uh, yeah, and apply for another degree. So, yeah, I'll say that. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, could you please lead us to the studio room and uh, we will see more things here. As you can see, the road here is very tough to walk and you need to be very careful about the set the rock. Or in other words, there's a no road. And you can see the ex excavators are there and uh, make the noise sound. Yeah, after the April, the flood season will come in. So the uh, program always ended up um, before the May, before May, usually in the end of the April. Since the treasure is very precious, we need to do the security check and exam uh, by the security people. So we will see you later. You can see that in this security room, everyone who are going to leave the treasure site will be examined very carefully. Mainly, they are testing whether you have some metal, you know, things in, you know, in your pockets or things like that. Cause most of the treasure are metal, very precious metal. Okay, go uh, explain, Okay, let's go. Let's follow. It's only. Uh, I'm asking her what's the most impression uh, work that since she has working here. Um, I think it's the the whole process of the excavation because it's, it's a very scientific, rigorous, and you know fascinating work because uh, everyone does their jobs following a series of strict standards. Uh, as you see before in the tent there, there's a, they use a system to register the objects and then they set them to uh, the storage unit upstairs. Um, the whole process is uh, very uh, scientific and reasonable. So it's, it's like um, uh, conserve service the original historical information. I know that your major is about art, right? It's uh, art history. So why are you interested in the, you know, archaeology work here? Because uh, I like old things, you know, uh, especially these uh, hundreds or thousands of years ago. It's 
very uh, there are a lot of information inside them. Like uh, you can imagine, I uh, would you um, like uh, get a, get an object. You can imagine uh, what people did of the time and what the society like. Very um, I think very exciting. Okay. Thank you. So now we're going to the treasure zoo. So now we are in the treasure room and we will not tell you guys where it is. Uh, what do you expect to see? And uh, firstly, let's welcome uh, Mr. Liu Zhiyan. He is the uh, co-leader of the project, and he will be our guide to this adventure. Also, Cong Yi will be his assistant to better introduce every treasure to you guys. Liu uh, Zhuran, uh, Okay, uh, Mr. Liu just said we need to put on the gloves uh, because that, that will better protect the uh, relics. Okay, um, these are the uh, most uh, fun discoveries for the last year. Uh, the accessories, there are gold and silver and bracelet, uh, uh, hairpins, and uh, like some buckles like this. Okay, um, this is the very um, uh, good quality uh, bracelet. Um, there are uh, dragon patterns on the side of it, and it's for the male. Okay, this is a hairpin, a gold hairpin, and uh, the head of it is in the Rui pattern, a traditional pattern. Uh, there are still some uh, accessories on clothes, uh, such like these buckles and uh, this one. This is a special one for, uh, it's on the belt and you can have like uh, some small uh, things uh, like uh, keys or um, uh, jade. Yeah. Can we take a close look at this? I'm asking him what's a special place. Okay, um, this is a, a dexie in Chinese, okay. yeah, and there, are, uh, there is a gap between this pattern and uh, the bottom, and you can uh, make it through the belt and uh, hang some uh, small things here. You can see it's very detailed. There are little birds and some flowers, trees on this gold made, you know, decoration things. Yeah. 
we can say a lot of the uh, you know this relics are about the earrings or necklace uh, about earrings necklace or some decoration things it seems like daily use things so uh, when we found this large amount of you know decorations and you know ordinary people using uh, decoration things what's the meaning of this so we found a lot of 跟平民或者是跟老百姓视频有关的这些东西，耳环呀，这个簪子呀，它在我们考古上面有什么意义呢？嗯、这个它的意义在于，就是说这个我们之前发现的很多都是这个高等级的东西嘛，啊，这个比如说是这个皇室的或者是王府的，现在我们发现了一些这个这个中下阶层的一些这个这个物品，这样对这个整个社会的一个这个物质文化的一个面貌是一个完整的一个反应，而不是单一的一个某一个阶层。啊，这样，这样的话会对让我们对这个明代晚期这个社会有一个更全面的一个了解。嗯、um, ，OK， 嗯、um, ，these uh, uh, discoveries provide、um, the material evidence of the、uh, ordinary people, like not the high-ranking,、uh, the elite. So、um, it would、uh, it would help us to、uh, research on、uh, the society of the late Ming Dynasty. Um, uh, have more details about it. Okay. Um, these、uh, silver ingots are uh, most are uh, the late Ming Dynasty. And uh, like Wan Li, Tianqi, and Chongzhen, the last emperors of the dynasty. Yeah, we just use this this ingot as an example. On the top, it says Guiyang Zhou. Guiyang Zhou is today the capital of Hunan. For as an example, the the first three letters characters are said Guiyang State. It is a Place that located in Hunan Province right now. 然后这个上面还有一些文字是这个崇祯，这个十五年，就是是这个这个嬴定铸造的一个年代。And in the middle, of this line of characters marked the year that made this silver ingot. 嗯，这个银五十两啊，就是这个这个嬴定的重量。And the this line of characters shows how heavy it is. Mr. Liu introduced that these silver ingots, all of them are over 400 years ago, and it shows different、uh, empires in the Ming Dynasty. And the silver ingots are the biggest, you know,、uh, discovery of this you know, treasure site. It shows the tail that Zhang Xianzhong sink、uh, their、uh, his boat. Into the the river is the true, true story. It is. So,、uh, what's the most, you know, important or most fundamental, you know, discoveries of the second phase of the the discovery this year? Um, just found the most important piece of this this artifact is this. Now we see this this is called the Jin Bowl. Ah, this is the Ming Dynasty Jin Bowl. Ah, this is our second find. This this the most important piece of this Jin Bowl is just here. 这个、These couple of things are the most important and precious relics that、uh, right now they are found. It is the imperial seal of Ming Dynasty. It all made by gold. So let's ask Mr. Liu, and so why it is so important? 嗯，它这个之所以重要呢，就是说这个金宝是这个王的身份的一个象征啊，啊，它这个这个，而且这个之前在这个国内这个是没有发现，这是首次发现这个明代金宝的一个实物。It is the first time to find the、uh, imperial seal in Ming Dynasty.、Uh, the seal is the、uh, Shows the status of the imperial in Ming Dynasty. This, according to this this oral history, this every king of the dynasty has only one gold ingot. 
According to the uh, historical records, every kingdom only have one imperial seal, so it is really rare in the history. According to the historical you know, records, the imperial seal is about uh, 10 uh, centimeter higher, and on the top of it, it is a turtle's you know, decoration. The seal only have four characters shows the status and who they are, who the seal belongs to. Right now, there's only one imperial seal that uh, they can, you know, uh, they can find, they, they can sure that who it belongs to. It is King of Rong. Uh, King of Rong, his, uh, his empire, his kingdom is located in Hunan, uh, Hunan Changde, uh, in right now. But why the uh, king seal in Hunan province could be found in Sichuan province right now? It shows that uh, rebel Zhang uh, steal and rap of those you know, precious things from Hunan to Sichuan. It shows the tale is the true story. Okay, let's take a really close look at those imperial seeds. We can see it's some. It's not a uh, not a whole seal. It's just parts of them, and this is the first letter of the seal on the uh, left top. We cannot recognize what characters it is. But if you look closely at this one, we can see it clearly. It, this is a character Bao in Chinese. It means the seal. So the four characters of the seal, uh, normally the last one is this Bao. And these are the turtles decoration on the top of the seal, all of the turtles or the the seal are made of gold, and every one of the complete whole seal that weighs about uh, four uh, kilograms. Okay, what's next? Besides those uh, silver and gold things, there are a lot of iron items that they found, including some swords and warships and those uh, uh, boats, uh, the, the, the boat spite, spites. Mm-hmm. The large amount of the boat spites is a good you know, example that good indicates a good thing that indicates the uh, sinking boat and the, the sunken silver tail is the real story. That shows the wood part of the boat may be you know, rotated, uh, be rotated, and only the uh, iron things could be, you know, uh, stayed today, last to today. Mm-hmm. 
本年度的另外一个认为比较重要的一个发现，就是这个通过这样兵器的一个发现，这个可以认为是这个地方应该是当年啊有过一场战争。These are the knives and swords that they discovered this year. It is uh, these three pieces of things are what, uh, three of many things they found this year. It is the most important thing uh, for the year-long, you know, uh, discovery. It shows there is really a warship. It's a battlefield uh, on this area. So, Mr. Liu, what's, uh, 还有什么更多的东西吗? So, uh,就是,呃,咱们第二次发掘,您觉得最重要的是我们确认了这个,这个,这个,呃,遗址的这个性质,就是认为它是一个,这个,古战场的一个遗址,这是和之前那个我可能认为 Yes, I just asked about um, what's the most important meaning for the second phase of excavation. Uh, and Mr. Liu said, like, uh, since we found a lot of weapons and uh, both spikes, uh, we can. Um, identify that this side is more than a treasure site but a um, battlefield in the in ancient so that's very meaningful and it will help uh, the experts from his uh, archaeo it will help the experts to uh, get more information and research on like the politics military and other social lives back backwards to 400 years you mean dynasty? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Mr. Liu is the expert and the uh, team leader of this excavation work. And we have seen the treasures here. They are precious and they are really reachful. From those treasures, we can see their daily uh, decoration, daily life decorations, the war swords and knives, the imperial seeds, the uh, bow sparks, and there are many of the uh, silver ingots. I think all of you will be, you know, uh, have this special time to see uh, what they found in the uh, past three years. And this uh, excavation work has been selected one of the 10 most important discoveries, uh, archaeological discoveries in China in 2017. And after seeing all these treasures, We'll wrap up our live report today. And in the future, an exhibition tour across China will be held in, uh, and a park and a museum will be established nearby this site. It will be a combination of significant historical, artistic, scientific, social, and cultural value. Hope you all enjoy our adventure in Jiangko today. And if you like this show, Please share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Thank you for watching. See you next time.